Hello, welcome to this week's episode of How's the Market, Pensacola. Um, just want to let you guys know if you've been following the show, I got a couple of comments on Facebook going, hey, where's this week's show? Uh, the date above me says Monday, and I'm just trying to do that for continuity, especially since this is what the data is from. I, I usually get the data either Sunday night or Monday morning. Um, so I'm going to give that for, say, Monday, but I'm shooting this on Friday. Uh, why the delay? I was in Mexico. I have a couple coaches of mine that I set in what they call a hot seat where you have four coaches, like a panel, right? Like a Jedi panel that looked at me and just kind of peer into my soul. And all of them looked at me and said, you need to go away. You're working 10, 12, 15, 16, 18 hours a day. And you've done it too many days. You need to go away. Go away. And I, it didn't take a whole lot of convincing. <laughs> We had a couple of deals closed actually while I was gone, um, but that's that's the good part about having a team. That's a good part about having some support staff and a team working with you. I got the deals done, and there was a couple of them that were a little difficult, but we got them done even when I was sipping on, we'll call it adult drinks, in Mexico. But I know you guys don't want to hear all about my cruise. You want to know about what's going on with the data. Welcome to real estate. Let's go. I'm a man. My mission is to help people break through all the noise out there and don't need no permission. I want to help you get to actual truth. Permission. Don't you just want the truth? Okay, so as I do every week, I want to make sure we talk about this slide right here. We're going to jump down to the computer. I do this as a baseline, and this is for the folks that do start this week. So if you, this is the first time you've seen it, this is what this is. If it's not the first time, it's still a refresher. If we have between six and seven months worth of inventory, that is considered a neutral market. All right, it's not a buyer's market, it's not a seller's market. Greater than seven months is considered a buyer's market. Less than six months is considered a seller's market. That changes tactics. All three of these markets change your tactics on both the buyer's and the seller's side. So you really have to pay attention. If you ask someone, is it a buyer's market, a seller's market, and they give you just a general answer, yes or no, they don't know what they're talking about. I'm going to show you they don't know what they're talking about right now. They don't know what they're talking about. It's, oh my goodness, maybe the price point that they work all the time is a hyperseller's market. And I'll give you that definition in just a minute. But if you ask in general, how's real estate? Is it a buyer's market or a seller's market? Mm, both. It's a buyer's market. It's a neutral's market. It's a seller's market. Let me explain what I'm talking about. As I'm switching slides, though, I do want to make sure the other thing we talk about is what's the difference between a hyper seller's market and a hyper buyer's market? Anything under three months worth of inventory is considered a hyper seller's market. As a seller, you can be pretty aggressive at pricing those properties. As a buyer, you need to bring strong offers because there's not much inventory there. Okay. Now, what is a hyper buyer's market? Anything over nine months. So as a seller, you need to be priced right, if not slightly below value because there's a ton of competition. You've got to differentiate. I'm not saying those properties aren't selling. They are. And I'm not saying they're all not going to sell at value. They are. You just need to be able to differentiate. And as a buyer, at those price points, eh, you can be a little more aggressive. All right. So the first county we're going to talk about is Escambia County. And this may make more sense for, let me see if I can talk. See, I've been in Mexico. This may make more sense for those who this is their first show. Um, over here on the left is the prices. On the right is the month's inventory. That's why I always show that first slide first. So as you can see, anything under 250000 is a hyper seller's market. Now, it's funny because the two hundred and fifty to three hundred and fifty is on the verge of a hyper seller's market. Now, they're calling it a seller's market, and it is, but I say anything under three months is a hyper seller's market. So Shane, what about three months? Well, I would probably throw both of these into the hyper sellers marketing category. So understanding I can push the envelope a little bit as your listing agent. And if we are looking to buy one of these units, then we probably need to be pretty aggressive and ready to go because, well, it's that market. Now, again, I want to clarify this, and this is a perfect example of this. I get this question all the time on the shows. I get it on YouTube, I get it on Facebook, Instagram. They're like, you're saying it's a hyper seller's market, let's say between two and 250 in Escambia County, but I see tons of houses. I didn't say there wasn't a lot of houses. This report that we're looking at also shows the houses, 
the number of actives in that same price point right now is 206. So there's 206 properties in Escambia County that are priced between 200 and $250,000. I'm not here telling you there's not properties for sale. I'm telling you that we also have 196 pending. So the appetite between 200 and 250 is strong, very strong. So that means that if that appetite continues, we will run out of inventory in two and a half months, unless we get new inventory. Make sense? So that's where some of these numbers are coming. All right, let's keep going. From 350 to 450, we're calling that a seller's market. Um, at 450 to 500, if you've watched this show for the last, gosh, two and a half months, I've talked about this being a weird pocket. This number got way up there at one point. I want to say like 14 months worth of inventory. It was strange. Uh, it's been a phenomenon almost all year. Um, it's coming back down into line. We're at 8.4 months worth of inventory right now. Um, there's still just not as much of an appetite. And I'm starting to wonder, because I see the 450 to 5, or 4 to 450 has gone up a little bit, starting to wonder if some of these properties, the 450 to 500, have dropped prices to now come into the 4 to 450 category. All right, so if this is coming down, but this is going up a little bit, uh, maybe. 5 to 550, uh, 5.3 months worth of inventory. And that's really because we just don't, that looks like it's one of the lowest ones at 15 months worth of inventory. You just don't have much properties. I mean, I can jump up here to the zero to 50 and there's only 13. And I would venture to say probably half of those are lots. Um, but we're at 5.3 there. And anything over 550 uh, is definitely a buyer's market with 650 to 700 being 19 and a half. So year and a half and 700 plus being year and a half. Basically, those are probably your more expensive condos out of the beaches. Uh, and it's fine. Again, they're they're moving. And it's not like anything 700 plus between 700,000 plus I got 97 properties active right now. And people go, well, are there actually people looking at those? Pro oh yeah. I've got two buyers right now that are coming into town. Um, three weeks. They're like, don't show me anything under a million. Okay. If you're, if you're familiar with Pensacola and you know what you want, great. They know exactly what they want. And they're right. Exactly. All the checklists that they give me, yeah, we're not finding that under a million dollars because it was pretty specific. Um, so there are some properties out there and there are some that are being bought. It's just 15.7 months worth of inventory. So let's switch over now, shall we, to Santa Rosa County. Santa Rosa County is always fun to look at. Uh, head back down to the screen. Look, 400000 under, hyper seller's market. So the same way I was talking about in Escambia County, that this is technically a seller's market, I would venture to say anything under 400000 right now in Santa Rosa County is a hyper seller's market. Though zero to 50, you've got one property and it's a lot. So that's not even going to work. Okay. Look at this. The one to 150 mark, there's not even a month's worth of inventory. Let me say that again. If you've got something that fits between that 100 and that 150 range, there's not even a month's worth of inventory. So let's say that first time home buyer who's wanting to get a home, but the highest property they can possibly qualify for is $145,000 because of their debt to income ratio. But they want to live in Santa Rosa County because they like the schools there. All right. There's 20 properties they can look at. That's it. That's all. I, I need that to say, I'm, I'm quiet on purpose. I need that to sink in. If you've got something in that price point, call me because we can be aggressive. I think I told you guys the story a couple of weeks ago about a property I came in and said, listen, I think it's about 135,000. I think that's where we're at. Let's list it at 150. So we pushed it over 10% of what the comps showed. I looked at the comparables. I know how to do this. I've been doing it two plus decades. Um, I looked at the comparables. It came up about 135 to 137 is where I was at. Let's push it to 150. We got a full price offer, 150. All right. But when an appraiser goes to appraise, the first thing he has to look at, one of the first questions he has to ask is what is a willing seller willing to sell it for? And what is a willing buyer willing to pay for it? That means a contract. That aspect doesn't exist when you're doing a refinance. So now we're, we're putting more um, emphasis is the word I was looking for more emphasis on the comparables. But once we see this is what a willing seller is willing to sell it for, and this is what a willing buyer is willing to pay for it. 
the appraisal came back with no problems. We closed. So imagine me telling you, hey, I think it's worth 135. Let's push it to 150. And we get a full price offer. And you thought it was only 135, but the appraisal came in low and it only came in at 145. You're going to be mad at me because I got you an extra 10 grand? No. But that's part of the marketing. And you don't know that unless you know these numbers that I go over every week. So that's why I try and share this data with you guys so that you can make those decisions. Hopefully, if it comes time and you're ready to sell, you call me. That's what I'm really hoping for. But hey, if you don't and you actually are able to get accomplish what you want to accomplish, good on you. All right. So anything under 150, um, seriously hyper sellers market and we don't have much property. So if I add these three up, and again, this one's a lot, so I'm not even going to take that into consideration. Between 50 and 150 in Santa Rosa County, i got 36 properties to look at, and that's it. And some of these have only been on the market a minute, and they've got multiple offers. So this price point is very, very hot. If you've got something that you're thinking about liquidating that one, call me. All right, so we're going to say anything under 400000 is tough. We've got more actives between 140, or between 200 and 300. So we got what is that 248 properties so at least they got some options there but under 200 man there's just nothing um and look at this in santa rosa county you go from four to 500 and you're still at four and four and a half months worth of inventory so that's still considered a seller's market so basically in santa rosa county anything under half a million is a seller's market but remember the question that i asked at first that i get aggravated at and i think i say this at least once every other episode i just get aggravated at it because i hear it all the time hey shane is it a, a you know or hey Jim Bob, is it a seller's market or a buyer's market? Because they see their realtor tag, right? And people go, oh, it's a seller's market. And if you only work in Santa Rosa County and you only work under half a million dollars, I guess technically you're not lying. But that was not the question. The question was, is the real estate market a buyer's market or a seller's market? And the answer is it's both. Under half a million in Santa Rosa County? Yes, that's a seller's market. But what happens if your property is over half a million? Between five and 550, ladies and gentlemen, that's a neutral market. You better differentiate, all right? There's only 19 properties, but there's not much appetite for it. There's only five under contract. So, okay, I got 20 properties out there. Five people are under contract. That's what? A quarter? So I've got to compete against all 20 for a quarter. For these five people, I got to compete against 20, 25 properties. You better differentiate. As a buyer, Somebody's asking 510, maybe you can get some concessions. Hey, listen, I want you to pay the closing cost. Now, I get the question all the time, can you have the seller pay all the closing costs? Um, we need to put a number to that. We need to put a quantitative number to that because if you put all, listen, seller to pay all closing costs, if that was in a contract and A, it was allowed by the lender, um, you could go nuts. I mean, you could get environmental surveys that would cost thousands of dollars and the seller would be on the hook for it. So, any seller worth their salt is going to put a number on that. So we might as well put a number to it when we begin. Let's put a percentage, you know, hey, 3%. Seller to pay 3% of the purchase price towards my closing costs. Okay? So that's that's one way of doing it. But we need to put a number to it because if not, then it's just, it doesn't make any sense because a seller, literally, I've had contracts come across my desk, especially when I owned the mortgage company. Man, I saw some contracts come across my desk. I'm like, are you kidding me? This is a $700,000 house. And it literally, the word said, seller to pay all closing costs and they got some crazy inspections <laughs> i shot a video earlier this year uh it made me think of as i was telling a story um one of the one contract i saw this year was subject to a feng shui inspection now who's licensed to do a feng shui inspection and how do i get that because uh <laughs> I did talk with some friends of mine uh, out west and on the Hawaiian Islands, uh, a good friend of mine on the Hawaiian Islands, one of the business mentors I know. Uh, he said that's actually very common there, that they, they want feng shui inspections and they want the design of the property. Um, he gave me an example. He said if the you walk in the front door and you see the back door directly, they just line up directly, it's not feng shui. Basically, they feel like the money would flow in through the front and since the back is not offset, it would just flow right back out and so the house is not fiscally responsible um okay i'm not here to judge somebody's thoughts on that i just you know in our area i'm trying to figure out who's a licensed feng shui inspector but you get my point you can't just put a seller to pay all closing costs because we could get feng shui inspectors we could get all kinds of stuff going on at that point 
Um, but <laughs> rabbit trail, let me come back to this. The whole reason I said this is because at 6.7 months worth of inventory between five and 550, a buyer can be a little aggressive and say, Hey, I want these closing costs. I maybe want the price off. Um, I sold one. What was it? Two months ago. Uh, the entire ride and lawnmower with the tractor and everything else was all sold with it. Um, no value was given to them, but that's what they wanted. So anyways, um, 550 to 600, well, above 550 in Santa Rosa County becomes a seller's market. A buyer's market, excuse me. Above 550 becomes a buyer's market with 650 to 700 being a hyper buyer's market. So got to pay attention to that stuff, guys. You really, really do. Um, that's our numbers. Again, I hope I brought a little bit of value to you. If I did, do me a favor. Hit like, hit comment, hit share. And if you plan on doing anything in real estate over the next 12 months, anything, buying another rental, selling the property, buying a property, in the next 12 months, if we, I've got, I think I told you last week, I've got a bunch of clients talking to me about spring already. And that's fine. <clears throat> well, excuse me. Um, that's fine. Let's talk about spring. All right. Let's talk about winter. There's about there's people now. Some of my business friends are like, "Hey, we may need some more tax write-offs because I've had a pretty good year, so we may need to pick up some property to depreciate to offset some of that." Okay, that tax conversation needs to be happening now. It's practically August. We need to start having those conversations now. Do we want to own the property by the end of the year so that we can homestead it? Because if we can't, if we don't own it by December 31st, we don't close by December 31st. We can't homestead it for 2020. So those are the conversations I'm having. If you plan on doing anything in the next 12 months, let's chat. We'll discuss options. Is that option always going to be to sell? No. There's going to be times when I say, hey, look, I know a good rental management company. Let's talk about renting that property out and we'll buy the different one because you're going to do a move up. Might not work to sell. It might be in your best interest to sell. We've got a client right now, absolutely in their best interest to sell um, because they, they can't rent it out. It's just, it's not, it would take too much capital to get it rent ready. And so it just doesn't work. It just doesn't work for them. So it was absolutely necessity to sell. Um, and then there's all kinds of other reasons. I could go through example after example. But what I'm trying to tell you is if you're even considering doing anything the next 12 months, give me a call. Shoot me a message on here. We'll chat. I mean, I can just chat with you on the phone for 20 minutes if you want to. Um, I don't mind chatting at all. If you're in my area, I have gotten a couple of people that have seen the show. Um, I got one guy from Oklahoma. Uh, who saw the show a month ago and uh, reached out and he said, Shane, I don't know if you remember me, but we were stationed together in Hawaii. I'm like, I absolutely remember you. Of course I do. He goes, well, I own this property and I own my home and I'm looking to buy another property. Can you help? And I'm like, well, I don't know anything about your city as far as Oklahoma is concerned. I do have a network across the globe so I can hook you up with someone who knows that city. And then if you want me just to help you evaluate the deal, working with this agent that's in that city sure no problem and looks like they're out i think they've narrowed it down to three or four already so that i don't mind doing but i've had people actually go hey i need you to look over the legalities of this contract that i just wrote to put the for sale by owner and there's some strange stuff well now you're asking me to practice law i can't do that but for the most part i should be able to help somewhat and if i can i absolutely will but here's a favor like this if you haven't liked the Facebook page or subscribe to the YouTube, do that for me, okay? Comment on it. Tell me if there's anything else you would like to hear from these episodes. <clears throat> wow. I need to go get some, uh, some more water. Thanks for watching. Have a great, great week. I'm a man on a mission. My mission is to help people break through all the noise out there. And Don't need no permission. I want to help you get to actual truth. Don't you just want the truth?